welcome to KMTV, I'm Louisa Britton, your top stories tonight. Bus driver guilty after drink driving, £4 million grant for historic dockyard and Gilliam get ready to face Sheffield United. But first this evening, a bus driver has been found guilty of dangerous driving after crashing while twice over the legal alcohol limit. 56-year-old Frank Okelawan had been out drinking with his friends until 9 o'clock in the morning. He crashed a single-decker Arriva bus into a house in Dartford and damaged two cars. Okelawan will be sentenced at Maidstone Crown Court, but the date hasn't been set yet. A gangster who was locked up for more than 50 was locked up more than 15 years ago for killing a man has launched a high court battle to be moved to an open prison. 69-year-old Kenneth Noy was sentenced to life after stabbing Stephen Cameron in front of his fiance at the Swanley Interchange. Noy is also infamous for his part in the Brinks Matt Bullion robbery in the 1980s, where he and a gang of armed men stole £26 million in gold and diamonds. He filed for an appeal in 2013 and 2015, but was rejected both times. Now, dash, dash cam footage captured the moment a car made an illegal turn right in front of a lorry. At this junction in Barton Drive on the Isle of Sheppey, the driver of a silver car turns right and narrowly avoids crashing into the oncoming lorry. In September, a no right turn sign was set up to stop cars making the manoeuvre. The historic dockyard in Chatham will be getting more than £4 million worth of funding. That's thanks to the Heritage Lottery Fund. I went there earlier today. This impressive building is the fitted rigging house here at the Chatham Historic Dockyard and the new Heritage Lottery Fund grant, which was announced today, almost £5 million, will help bring it back into use since it's been pretty much left untouched since the Navy left in the 1980s. The Grade 1 listed structure was built in the 18th century and the £4.8 million grant will enable the Chatham Historic Dockyard Trust to secure its future. It will be turned into offices to be rented out to businesses and will also be home to improved library and archive rooms. The building will also host a new volunteer space for the Trust. The challenge of the dockyard is to create enough income to pay all of the costs of maintaining this amazing place and deliver our education services. So the use of this building in the future will generate income that safeguards this building but also contributes to the safeguarding of the rest of the site. This is though in a way the culmination of, I've been here 16 years, everything we've been trying to do and the Trust has been trying to do over the 33 years of its history, this is about becoming financially sustainable. So I am incredibly proud. We've got a long track record of working with the historic dockyard. Um, this now I think brings our total investment to around 28 million, um, so over a space of about 20 years. I think what the Dockyard Trust has achieved here in terms of the sort of mixed economy they've created, so everything from housing to workspace to uh, a museum and tourist attraction. It's really, um, you know, it's kind of put, put it centre stage, I think, for, for me in terms of the, the kind of the core heritage of Medway Town. There's also hope this project will help bring more tourism to the area and in turn boost the local economy. I think this is a really exciting initiative um, and I'm really pleased that the Heritage Lottery Fund were able to award £4.8 million to Chatham Dockyard. It will enable a, an excellent opportunity for local businesses, for local commercial use in an area of the dockyard that isn't presently being used to the best of its ability and that in turn will help reinvestment into the historic dockyard, uh, a museum for our national and local maritime heritage. Uh, and bring visitors into the local economy. All of this, you know, is joined up thinking. Well, I think Medway already is a destination for tourists because the dockyards are already fantastic as it is, but this is one, another piece of the, the, the jigsaw. This is the last big project at the dockyard, one of the most, when you're on the river, it's an iconic building, it's uh, beautiful to look at, and um, this really will just help that the, the next phase of, the dock, of Chatham Dockyard's life. Louisa Britton, KMTV. And in sport, Gillingham faced top of the table Sheffield United away on Saturday. The Gills sit in the 17th in the league and look to have an uphill battle against the Yorkshire side. But coach Aidy Pennock has every confidence that his side can pick up a good result. I imagine there's people that we're going to play Sheffield United top of the league and, and it's going to be difficult, we're not going to get nothing from it. But 
Like Jimmy Greaves said years ago, it's a funny old game football is. Um, but um, if you're not up for this sort of games, then there's no point being a professional football in my eyes. So, um, that's what it's all about, and I love it. You know, that's what we want to. You know, we're prepared for it, um, and we have to give it our all on, on the day. And before we go, here's Adam Devaney with the weather. The weather has picked up slightly today, reaching levels of 5 degrees Celsius across the county with a slight breeze. Temperatures will remain constant tonight, staying the same in most areas but decreasing slightly in the northern and southern areas of Kent. And then it will be another cool start to the day tomorrow, but with the added bonus of sunshine creeping out across most of Kent. And that's all from us this evening. We'll be back again tomorrow with all the latest stories from across your county. In the meantime, don't forget you can always keep up to date by listening to KMFM or logging on to kentonline.co.uk. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. <laughs>